Make sure you check out our online store where we work with our graphic designer to create stunning garment and product designs that feature a wide variety of aircraft types such as British fighters, World War II aircraft, American bombers, Russian fighters and much more. You can pick your favourite designs and personalise any items within our Redbubble store that range from clothing right the way through to stationery. All of our designs feature our logo so you can show your support for the channel while getting a quality product. You can head to our website aircrewinterview.tv and click store or go to redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash AC interview. Thank you and enjoy. Yeah, so your first squadron was um, the Aardvox, wasn't it? And you also flew um, cat missions in Desert Storm. Can you tell us about yep. this? Yeah, that was interesting. Um, you know, we were right in the middle of workups when the war started. And I remember having the, the, you know, the CAG, which is the Air Wing Commander. He had the big meeting and they, they accelerated our IDTT, which is the uh, Interdeployment Training uh, cycle. Yeah, ID, it's been so long since I've been out of the Navy uh, training cycle. And so what it was is I remember he says, hey, we're, we're accelerating. We're going to cruise. Stand by. Get ready. Get everything taken care of because we're probably going to be out there between, you know, because they didn't know how the war was going to go. And they said, we're, we're going to be replacing the uh, the Nimitz battle group. So, we're, you know, of course, we're going through our workups, all the training, you know, and watching the war. How, how's it going? Well, you know, that war went by pretty quick. I mean, it, it showed the, you know, the, the, the how powerful the, the, you know, the U.S. military really is. And, of course, we were not as a U.S. military. It was a joint. And we had we had the RAF with us. We had, uh, God, I think we had, you know, we had everybody with us, you know. So, I mean, it's a quick war. So, by the time we are actually deployed and on the way there, um, the war is over. I mean, we, we got over there. It's, it was still considered desert storm. It was still combat. Uh, you know, considered combat, although it was like, no, I mean, no one's shooting at you. I ain't combat to me, you know, but we still had to have it. There was still a, a requirement that they wanted 24-7 um, combat air patrol over Kuwait. And the rule was nothing was to fly, nothing. And and we had, uh, I think the call sign for the controller, again, it was international. So it was, so we didn't know who would be controlling us. But I think the call, I remember the call sign was we always talked to, we check in, it was Bulldog. And we'd always check in with Bulldog. But we'd be launched out in sections and it'd be a pair of us flying over Kuwait. And by this time, all of Kuwait's on fire. You remember Saddam was saying he 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 ignited all the yeah, oil. All the wells. It was I mean it was so bad. I mean God, you we come back and our our you know our gray toms would be completely black underneath. Wow, we really? Be, yeah, we used flying over watch and, and we I got some great shots, pictures of of the stuff at night. It was incredible. You had a night mission because you didn't know which when you'd be launched to go on that mission. Cool. And there were long missions. There were like seven hour missions. And uh, you'd refuel, and and you didn't you didn't know when you're going to come back because what had to happen was you actually had to be relieved on station. So you we we just sit there and we just be capping for hours and hours. Next thing you know, we're like, we run in, so we come and say, hey bulldog, we uh, we need to get some fuel, and they say, hey, and they, they send a tanker out to us, and then mm -hmm. and then we're thinking, okay, is there, are we are we getting relieved? And you know, no nothing. They they they. they you're back, get back on station. So we just refuel, get back on station, refuel, get back. And so sometimes that's why sometimes we're like seven, seven hour missions. Um, but then what happened was I'm, I'll never forget this one time because we were kind of getting bored with this thing because the war is over. No one's flying. All we're seeing is a burning Kuwait and we're just wasting, we're just boring holes in the sky. And um, and again, you never knew who was going to relieve you. It was going to be your sister squadron, or it was going to be Eagles out of uh, Riyadh. Um, so what ended up happening one time was we're just it's been a long day, long mission, and we're and we're, they said uh, they, you know, we're the VARC. They go VARC uh, one zero one. Uh, your relief is is just getting getting close to the tanker. And, they, and so, but remember, we're relief on station. So we, we have to have them check yeah, in before yeah. we can leave. But he's just giving his heads up there. They're, they're out of Riyadh and they're, you know, Eagles are going to be replacing you. Well, so at this point, we started easing on over to 
to where the more where the carrier oh, we're right. still, we're still on stage. It's like yeah. getting closer. So, so as soon as we check in, we're heading home. <clears throat> and so no, no, no kidding. As soon as, and we, and we had already topped off. So we're, we're heading that way. And then all of a sudden Bulldog comes up and says, we got a bogey and it was a launch. And we're like, wow. and then, and then that's so funny because that's when the, the fangs and the claws come out. And now you have two toms, with fangs out, and then the, the, the hornet, <laughs> the, the claws out, and next you know they're like, boom! They're I, I guarantee you they're an afterburner, and we're an afterburner, and we're, wow. <laughs> we're like competing for the intercept, and, uh, and and we both get there, and sure enough, you know what it was? It was it was a UN when they had launched a UN airplane, and but they weren't they weren't squawking and they weren't talking, so they they you know that's why they just kept on getting us vectors to go see, and so we're like. It's a, you know, it's like, it's, it's a UN airplane. So finally, it's, it's, you know, all right, you guys got it. We're going home. So, you know, we went back home, but it was, you know, the storm, it was, uh, yeah, I was, I was there, but I missed everything because the war finished up so quick. I mean, it, it, the, the one thing that was really interesting to see was the, um, what they used to call it. They called it the, uh, highway to hell. Do you, do you oh, remember about that? Uh, was that when they started bombing all the vehicles going on that long mile? Yeah, and yeah. people are that was still, smell it. Yeah, that I mean, because it was just it was it was all still there, and so we yeah. we'd always fly over the highway to hell. I mean, I tell you what, that was yeah, that was an incredible incredible view, incredible picture to see. Uh, yeah, you know, there. So yeah, the guy the guys did some good work there in, in, in eliminating the threat. So yeah, but, I remember that. But I'm going to bore you with a question here, Mark, because, like, okay, so what did you do? Like, so you said uh, seven-hour caps. Were you always alert, or did you just be like, did you see the football last week, or, you know, anything like that? Or, was that, or were you that's, always... It's, 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 I mean, the, the, the Rio, that's, that, see, that's when, you know, the, that dual-seat uh, relationship is, you know, he runs the radar. I'm just flying the airplane. Now in a dogfight, yeah, I can run part of the radar. I can get some uh, through the radar yeah. in the dogfight, um, and I do that. But for the most part, you know, is an air defense fighter, uh, so they're they're looking long. You know, they're, they're taking the AUG nine and getting a nice scan volume going and trying to pick up anything, looking both high, low, and, and they're you know he'd be back there working. But yeah, I'd be talking to him, you know. And but that's about it. I, and I'd just be looking. You're always you're always looking around. But yeah, it was a long. You know, the the worst part about it was is your ass would get sore. The, the ejection seats yeah, are one of the most yeah. comfortable seats. And we were trying to do anything. Guys were like going, you come back from missions like, God, my ass hurts, you know. And uh, from sitting, in, you know, for seven hours in the, in the cockpit. So some guys were like. Uh, Coming up with some innovative things, that, you know, we go hunting through the carrier and try to find some, um, you know, those plastic bubble, bubble. Oh pops. yes, yes. So and so we started we started using those. But the funny thing about that was we we had to stop using that because it felt great at first because you're like, oh yeah, that, that makes it more comfortable. Uh, but the problem was is your body heats the air inside the next thing you know you're, you're, you're like my ass is burning you know it's, the, the, the heat the, the heat of the air you, you actually feel it through all your you know so and it was it was we were there during the uh summer it was it was hot the uh, the mean temperature on the carrier um was 140 degrees because the carrier is yeah. right smack in the middle of the persian gulf yeah. on that dark black car you know top carrier all the you know the steam from the catapults, uh, all the engines operating, all, all those poor guys, the, the maintenance uh, personnel, and the, the controllers, the, the the guys that were taxiing us on the flight deck. I don't know how they did it because we were dying in the uh, in the airplane. I mean, even at full AC, just like you're you're you're. you're you, we were wearing the, um, the uh, desert cami <clears throat> flight suits, yeah. the brown, light brown. We did turn in like. Dark. It almost looks like you're you're wearing a, a black suit because yeah, of course. It, you fill it with. I mean, you can really almost just rinse it out. And, and we always had to have just tons of water because you just you just be leaving your body. It's not it's so, not glamorous for an F-14 pilot, is it? Nah.